Can you see my dark circles? <laughs> I really, I'm looking forward to this break, let me tell you. <laughs> anyway, let's roll that intro. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and this what? Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Money Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today we're gonna do a little bit of a chatty style um, talk here. I call these my book chats, which is absolutely the least inventive title I could come up with, but that's what they're called. So I'll leave a link up here to all the previous book chats that I've done. And basically what book chats is, is just me talking about things within the bookish community that don't necessarily have to do with the book or reading. Did you get? You get me? Yeah, okay, cool. Also, my sweater has jingly things. I don't know if you're gonna hear that, so I'm so sorry. I tried to put the microphone um, somewhere where you couldn't hear them. But today what I wanna talk about is something that um, I, I, I have been thinking for for a long time and yet I'm probably gonna, you know, make a mess of myself trying to talk about it. And it's this idea that alongside with buying a bunch of books, booktubers have to be reading a bunch of books constantly. And what I mean constantly is, um, I actually remember hearing a booktuber say, that one of the reasons they read so much is because they finish a book and start a book like right away like there's no moment there's no catharsis there's nothing and i'm not saying that if you do that that that's wrong i'm just saying that that paints a really strange and crazy picture of book tubers in general like we're supposed to be these magical unicorns that are reading all the time when the reality is sometimes certain books require you to sit with them for a while and that there's nothing wrong with not picking up a book in a month because you're still thinking about another book or simply because you don't want to. I especially want to talk about the idea of sitting with a book for a really long time. Now I just posted my review of Lily Dalton Brooks Mid Good Morning Midnight. It's my favorite book of the year. Go watch it. Um, just a little bit of a disclaimer though at the beginning of that video I do talk about my eating disorder. So there, there it's gonna be like you know with the what's that called? Chapters. With the chapters you can skip that part if you don't want to um, know about that but you want to see my thoughts about that book. The thing is, when I read that book, I really didn't feel like picking up another book. And it wasn't because I didn't feel any book was gonna live up to it, although <laughs> that, that, is, that is also a thing. I do feel like, I, I don't think any book that I pick up this one, I'm looking over there because I have a haul over there that I'll film later. But um, I don't feel that any book that I pick up is going to live up to Lily Dalton Brooks' Good Morning Midnight at the moment. The same thing happened with Born. After I read Born, and after I read Dune, and basically ba after I've read my favorite books, the last thing I wanna do is pick up another book. Now, of course, this is my reading style. This is what I do to read. But I also feel that if you just watch booktube all the time, you have this idea, this general idea, that if you're not picking up a book right after another book, right after another book, right after another book, then you are not reading enough. Like if there was like, I don't know, <laughs> what is reading enough? Is there such a thing as reading enough? Is there such a thing as reading too little? I don't think so. I think as long as you do whatever the fuck you want to do, you're fine. But there is this expectation for booktubers to read a whole lot. And don't get me wrong, I've read 140 books this year. It's not like I'm not reading a lot. But the truth is sometimes I kind of want to sit with a book for a while, but I have pushed myself to read more, to have more content. And I think that that is such a big mistake because the best thing I did this year, well, not the, I mean, I did other things, but one of the best things that I did this year was sit with Good Morning Midnight for a really long time. And in fact, I also found that with Horrid, the, the, the novel by Katrina Lino. Um, at first, when I read that book, I absolutely hated it. I hated the ending. I loved everything else and I hated the ending. I still am not a big fan of the ending. However, I have 
come to realize that I don't dislike the book as much as I origi originally thought that I did. Because I sat with it, I sat with it, and I remember, I'll be, I'd like, you know those times where you're like doing something and suddenly a scene from a book comes to your mind and stuff? That, you know, you need that moment, you need that moment of catharsis sometimes. You need to really sit with a book. That's why I think poetry reading is not so prevalent on booktube, it's because with poetry, you you know, you can't, I mean you can, you can totally just grab a poetry book and go bam 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 bam, done! read all those poems, good. But the reality is, I, I think poetry above most other writing forms requires you to just sit with it for a while and analyze it and maybe reread and you know, go watch a movie and um, analyze what this word means in this sentence and you know, those kinds of things. And I don't think we have a culture of that on booktube. I think on booktube we have a culture of you gotta get it done, you gotta get it read, and then you gotta go to the next one and you know, what are you doing? Are you not reading the next book in the series? And, and, it, and it's a lot. And I think that it's not productive for booktubers and it's also not productive for people that are like booktube watchers. Of course, maybe for people that watch booktube it is kind of productive because you get to see a lot of reviews from a lot of different books. But as a reader myself, as somebody that likes to analyze what I read, that really likes to get into character motivations, that really likes to sit with things, it ruins my reading experience sometimes to just jump right into another book. You know, I do that a lot with series though, like usually with series I'll jump right into the next one because I want to know what happens, but it's with other things, with, with you know, for example, yeah, Good Morning Midnight, I didn't want to jump into another book, I didn't, I just wanted to sit with that book for ages and and that's literally what I did. I sat with that book. Hang on, cat. Come here. Come here. You want to sit on my lap? Okay. <laughs> Cuz they turn off my microphone. Say hi, cat. <laughs> so, I wanted to sit with um with that book for a really long time and that is what I did and I loved that experience. I loved just sitting on like laying in bed at night and instead of picking up another book just thinking about possibilities and the way things were written and all of these things that made that book so amazing for me. Like there were so many passages, so many things, so such beautiful, beautiful writing and beautiful life explanations and I wanted to just take a moment to appreciate that. So I did. And I didn't pick up another book for like a month. And you know what? That's fucking fine. And I'm so tired of this community. And by mistake, I think we I think booktubers don't do this on purpose. It's not like hmm, I'm gonna ruin everybody's reading experience. But it does tend to glamorize, just like the beauty community tends to glamorize over buying of um makeup and and and, and things like that. We glamorize the idea of reading constantly like who who doesn't like we do we literally make videos on how to read more how to read faster how to get through 100 books per year you know we we do that we do that and and we i don't think i have done that and i don't and i haven't done it out of like oh, <laughs> i'm going to get you it's just more of a i know people think that we're supposed to be reading all the time but the reality is I have other hobbies also, you know, like that's another thing, you know, it seems like if you're a booktuber, your only hobby is to read and to be a booktuber. And um, I, I, I've struggled with that because I have other hobbies and I have other things that I like to do with my free time sometimes and sometimes that includes reading and sometimes that includes watching 60 days in for hours on end, you know, or the crown, or role playing with my friends, you know, those things also take time. That's another thing. I've been so into role playing with my friends lately, and I really needed an escape from myself, so role playing with my friends has really helped me like escape from myself in a way books 
haven't been doing lately. So if you don't feel like reading, and I have said this before in a video and I will say it each and every time, baby honey boo boo child, if you don't feel like picking up a book, don't pick up a book. It's fine, it's really fine. Nothing's gonna happen to you for you not picking up a book in a month, in, in, in two months, in three months, whatever, it, however long it takes. Now, if you really wanna get back into reading and you're having a hard time, then yeah, find ways to get back into it and stuff like that. But if you're doing fine and if you're feeling fine, you don't have to be reading all the time. Hell, even booktubers don't have to be reading all the time. And if you are reading all the time, you know, I really sometimes think, wow, it would be great if I could become like a great big booktuber, you know, like the whole dream of being a booktuber so that I can get paid, so that I don't have to go to work, so that I have time to read. But then reading becomes my job and it stops being my hobby. So, you know, there's a whole other talk about that. But what i really want to like express and what i really want to get through in this video is that you don't have to read all the fucking time to be a good reader like you don't have to be bell walking down the streets reading a book please don't do that it's dangerous you know unless you're you know audiobooking it then it's not so dangerous but you know you you don't need that you don't need to be that person the only person you need to be is you. And if you don't want to read right now, don't read. It's fine. And if you don't want to read what everybody else is reading, and if you want to read poetry, and you want to spend a week on one single poem, fuck it. It's fine. So basically, I think that's all I had to say. Um, I guess this video could be summarized in fuck it, read whenever you want, you know? <laughs> but yeah, um, I just wanted to come on here and make sure that all of you are aware of that because I think that somebody needs to say it. Um, I don't think it's necessarily had to be me, but I mean, I, I have such a small platform, um, but you know, whenever you see somebody that's stressing out about not reading enough, there is no reading enough. There is no reading not enough, you know? Does, does, does having a bad year and not picking up a book for a year means you're not reading enough? No, it just means that you're not reading this year. Like, it doesn't mean anything other than you are not reading at the moment. And it's just as simple as that. You are not reading at the moment, period. And maybe next year you'll read 150 books. Who knows? But you know what? We'll be here for you. Whether you're reading one book, whether you're reading 100 books. It's fine. <laughs> So that's all I wanted to say. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know down below what you think about these things. Please hit the like button, hit subscribe, share, and remember that I appreciate each and every single one of you. Thank you for coming back to my videos and that I would see you all in another galaxy far, far away. Bye, everyone.